And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another night here at the League of Legends Pro League. Of course, this coverage is brought to you in English, in part by our friends at Gosu Gamers and Games in Asia. My name is Rapid, I'm here with Nero, and we'll be your shoutcasters for tonight, hopping into two of the best games. They're going to come your way for a long while. Starting off with a best of two series, it'll be OMG versus Young Glory. And then after a little bit of a break, we'll head into EDG versus World Elite, one of the best games I could ever imagine. You're going to be seeing these teams play a lot together, and uh, it's just going to be awesome to watch them. Of course, welcome my co-caster Nero to the stream. i got to break down these matchups. Yeah, so the first matchup will be OMG versus Young Glory. Of course, everyone is expecting it to be a one-sided stomp, but we'll see. Jagan is really stepping up his game, and I believe in the answer. I have seen him playing in the middle for Young Glory in the previous season. Well, it was a long time ago, but they are really improving uh, through the time of this uh, LPL split. And well, Young Glory, they grabbed the game versus LGD the previous week, so there's some big possibilities opening up for them. And there's Invictus Gaming at the bottom of the standing, so if they grab one or two more points, then IG might be in a lot of trouble. All right, well, taking a look at the standings right here, you can see OMG. Uh, there'll be kind of a battle between first and last as OMG will take on Young Glory, who are now tied with World Elite Academy after they went 1 1 versus IG last night. So uh, we'll have Young Glory versus OMG. Once again, OMG highly favored in that matchup, but we'll see if Young Glory can pull out something special. And as we did see World Elite Academy pick up a game versus IG last night, anything can happen. You really can't count any team out. Uh, but of course, that's just the first best of two. Uh, second best of two will be between the two second place teams. The World Elite taking on Edward Gaming. You can see them up there on your screen tied at 12 points apiece. And if they were the first best of two series, then uh, if one team split 2-0 uh, or beat the other one 2-0, they'd head up to first place. But OMG will get a chance to play against Young Glory and as long as they pick up one game, they'll hold on to first. Yeah, so World Elite versus Edward Gaming will be the best match today, definitely, and the best match of uh, for a lot of time, actually, because Starhorn, they're kind of shaky still. They are they're at the top of the standings, but they are not really the team that we expected them to be. And World Lead is really stepping up their play. They haven't been playing like that for a lot of time, actually, because they they dropped at the very beginning of the LPL, actually, and they were somewhere in the top of the world, but always sometimes uh, someone beat them. It was OMG, then it was Invictus Gaming, then it was Royal Club, and now World Elite is climbing up to the top. Mm -hmm. So it will definitely be interesting to see. Plus, Edward Gaming has the former members of World Elite, so they definitely have some kind of a fight going on between the teams right there. Mm -hmm. We'll see that on the screen too. Exactly, and now we're going to see the uh, starting lineup for uh, for Young Glory. You're going to see uh, them go through the lineup. Uh, I believe it's number one up in the top lane, and uh, then they just showed Yinfu there on screen. And now we're going to head to honestly the star player of the team. This is uh, Jian Gun. He's one of the best players I've seen him play. He's played actually. No, that's uh, that's Yinfu or. Who was on the stream? That was... That is, uh, yeah, that was Yen yeah. So now we're going to move on to Dian Gun. So this is what I'm excited about. I love watching this guy play. You can't ever expect him to get Yasuo, though. So with that band out, might default to the Cinder that he's played before. But he's also a big Orianna player. So I uh, might see that come out a little bit later on. Although Orianna not very popular in LPL at all. All right, so Chen Long, he is considered kind of a lacking AD carry in the LPL. But he's been really, I was, I was talking about it uh, for the whole Young Glory team, they are improving. So I'm hoping to see them win the lane finally. Well, that is the hope for them right now because San is considered to have kind of a weak laning phase. But then they lose the first turret and he's just there to free farm. And then in the late game, he is the super carry. But if um, Young Glory can win the early game, then there's no late game coming, so Sun can't really be useful then. And well, Young Glory should definitely play the early game. And now we're heading into the introduction of our second team, OMG. Oh my god, colloquially known as the Men in Black. 
These are China's dark forces, and they are incredibly dominant this season. You see 80% win ratio. Now we're going to hop into OMG's starting lineup. Get a chance to see everybody out there. And we're going to start out with... Uh, I, I want to I say that uh, uh, this is this is not it's not cool is this cloud right uh he's got it's not cloud it is data seven it is tricky boy cloud All was right. a little bit sick that's why he didn't play at the iem qualifiers and i think that he's still not ready to play all right, so, so a new support seven. stepping in for Saturn. Like you said, maybe a place where you can look for uh, Young Glory to come back. But uh, OMG have been kind of maybe looking at some other players out there. And especially with Cloud uh, a little bit under the weather. We'll see how that works out. But oh, oh. OMG indeed. We're going to check out Cool with, with a nice new haircut. So uh, I'm not sure if he's trying to emulate his inner Braum or something. Bring that out. Needs a little bit of a mustache, though, to make that work. But. And I like that, because it was Alan who did that first. Of course, he is drunk. And then Cool <laughs> did the same thing. So these guys are going for the bold head. And there we go. Speaking of drug, there you go. We've got two shaved heads in a row. Drug, formerly known as Loveland or Alan. He's in the jungle. You can see his stats there on your screen. So nice to see some team synergy coming in here between OMG, even though they do have a new member on support. Yeah, so definitely OMG bring him <laughs> this funny thing. And I am waiting for Gogoing to cut his hair too. Because he's had his hair for a long, long time. And it's just him looking like that. And I'd love to, to see him cut his hair completely. Yeah, what a boss. Kind of the front man of uh, the Dark Forces, OMG. Uh, loved seeing him in their, uh, in their World's Hype video. Man, they looked sick. But uh, we'll see if uh, see if they can force Go going into a haircut of his own. Uh, so that's gonna do it for our starting lineups for both teams. This is uh, you can see a lot of people tuning in to watch the top three teams in LPL. You'll be seeing them all tonight. We're actually gonna go ahead and hop into picks and bands. So starting things off with best of two will be Young Glory, your team in the blue on the left hand side of your screen. We'll be taking OMG in the red on the right. Yeah, so definitely the standard bands will be coming out in here, as always. But we'll see what the picks will be. Of course, I think that the Yasuo will be taken away from the Angon in the middle lane because he's been doing so well on him lately. But there's the Twisted Fate first ban. So mm -hmm. Twisted Fate really coming back into play right here. And immediately, no questions asked, it's a Yasuo ban. I think we've seen Yasuo banned in every single game uh, for the last, uh, at least this week. Uh, I think there's one exception. I can't remember the teams that we're playing, but uh, you're going to see Yasuo banned a lot. And with a focus on the mid lane, man, you can really see Young Glory taking cool seriously. Banning out Twisted Fate, Ziggs, and... Oh, there's the Thresh, actually. That's a little bit different. Uh, I would have expected a new uh, or a, a new player maybe to kind of go through some trials with being banned out. But the Thresh versus Neymar, I don't know about that one. It's been a while since you've seen a support targeted, especially since they prioritize banning out cool so much. Yeah, not much of th not many Thresh bans coming out right here in the LPL. And Braum still another support ban. And usually we had, so yesterday, usually we had this Braum slipping through the bands and getting picked up. So we'll see what the first picks are. Well, watching the previous splits and seasons, I'm used to seeing the top laners picked up first, but lately it has changed by a lot. But still, Lulu, I think that this is going to be the top laner. Yeah, and Go Going's probably going to pick up Gragas here. Uh, Gragas really top tier, but you can go for a jungle pick here. Lee Sin is still available. And Regardless of whether or not Drug and Cool are both cosplaying Lee Sin with the new haircuts, we'll see if they want to lock that one in. Although it does look like they're going to pick up, I, I, like you said, locking in the top laners probably first. It's either going to be a Jax or a Kale, and then the range matchup, I think Kale is going to be the pick of choice here. Locking it in as well as a Kog'Ma. So San getting his champion very early on. We'll see what Young Glory want to counter with. Yeah, and we have seen a lot of Kog'Maw's coming out lately, yesterday, the day before, and now we will see them coming out pretty much every single time. So San is the hyper carry that I told you about, and he's a little bit failing in the laning phase, so he's just going for this Kog'Maw straight away, preparing for the late games, and we'll see how it turns out. And once again, Leona for Yancer, he has been playing this champion over and over again, and only this Leona. We have seen... <laughs> Dr. Mundo on 
OGN yesterday, so maybe Young Glory have learned a little bit from the Koreans. I certainly hope so. Dr. Munda, I really feel like he has a huge place in this current meta. I I'd love to see him return to the jungle with the new Spirit of the Elder Lizard, but that comes in the next patch. We're still here in 4.10. Uh, for LPL. The Dr. Mundo top lane, I don't understand why you'd pick a Dr. Mundo into a Kog'Maw. I, I mean, it seems to me like that's something that Sana's going to be pretty happy about, able to shred down his percent HP, especially since this is the 4.10 patch and you deal even more percent damage with that Blade of the Ruin King. Alright, so cool picks up uh, the Lee Sin that he's been playing on the All-Stars. So that is the question. Will he be playing the Leeson or is it going to the jungle? Um, but yeah, most probably it is going to be Drug playing this one. And Morgana support. That's a thing that has been, has been hovered over yesterday, but we haven't seen it locked in. And now we'll finally get to see it. And Morgana isn't the most popular support in the LPL, as we know. But she is a very good counter to Leona. We saw locked in for Yanser. It's not really a big deal um, to just Black Shield, the guy that you see about to get Sunstriked or Solar Flared, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I, I think that, like you said, it's not a usual pickup, but should still be very effective in that matchup. Last pick will probably be Cools, and we've seen a lot of Rise coming out. It's locked in again, the Rise. You can see the Chinese commentator is very, very excited about this one. Just because not only is Morgana a little bit weird, but we have a rise coming out. Where'd that come from? Yeah, that is really weird because it it is supposed to be Gogoing playing the rise. He has such awesome stats in this champion. Yet it's cool grabbing this champion and Kale will be going into the top lane. But do they switch that though? Like, do you put rise top lane now and move Kale to the mid lane? Maybe, but I'm talking about the players. Gogo Inc. was the one playing Rise. He was right, one so of the first guys. Hmm. I mean, they didn't switch the champions. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I mean, if you're and not there was the, the ghost on cool. Yeah, so that would say it's definitely going to be a Rise in the mid lane. Young Glory, <laughs> seeing that Rise locked in, they have to be okay with that, just because in the end, like Rise won't be able to deal a whole lot of damage to Doctor Mundo. He's going to have Spirit Visage and his ultimate on it. You're just not going to kill him with a rise. Kale, maybe if she shreds down his resistances, but the real big thing that Young Glory have to worry about is going to be this Kog'Maw. I, I don't, I just don't understand how they're going to deal with the with San in the late game once we get here uh, through, you know, the first 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, and if you just look at that right now, two shaved heads, Rise and Leeson. Hey, there you go. They're going with the, the ball, the power. Rise and Lee Sin locked in, and maybe a little bit of cosplaying there by the rest of OMG. You can see they'll be facing off here against YG in just a second. We're going to head off to a quick commercial break, but while we do, let's go ahead and remind you guys of the standings coming into tonight's uh, team comp, or teams, or games, rather. Yeah, there we go. Uh, starting off first place, it is OMG with 14 points, and they'll be going up against Young Glory with two points. At the bottom, of course, second series will be OMG versus World Elite. Let's go ahead and hop into game number one. See that up on your screen. Young Glory facing off against OMG. So it's already going to be a really interesting game right here. But, well, I'm still with OMG right here. This Kale pick, even though it got nerfed by a little bit, it still is so huge. Especially if you have a Kog'Ma right there with the Morgana's Black Shield too. This is really huge. Plus the Leeson kicking someone into your team. This oh, someone is going like to go down with Dr. Mundo. Uh, I feel like that would be not the champion you want in the middle of your team. Now, Neymar is going to get pushed out of here. Uh, Yanser, I, I mean, he's a good guy to have in the front of the team. But I don't really think Young Glory want to go for too big of an invade. Especially with Jarvan. I mean, they could stick around. But they have to know that this is going to get warded out early on. So I'm not sure exactly what their plan is going up through that top half of the jungle. Maybe it's just to counter out the OMG invade. See, San is actually warding between the middle turrets down bottom lane. That's something we haven't seen for a good five to six patches back when teams really wanted to see the lane matchups. Yeah, that is going to be interesting, as I said. And San, having this little glowing thing on his head and placing the wards, he's going to be the enlightening one in OMG's lineup. 
Yeah, he's going to be spreading that light everywhere. Even though he's not the light bringer or anything like that, he is going to be down in the bottom lane. So with a big focus on warding that, oh, this is so smart. Look at what OMG are going to do. They're camping out the double golem brush with a ward in lane, and they're going to try to land a dark binding into a ton of burst damage for a cheesy first blood. The only problem is that with the top yep. lane swap, that's actually going to mean that the solo laner is going to be double jungling with the jungle, and the duo lane is going to be up in top lane. So, cool strat by OMG, but it's not paying off thanks to the lane swap from Young Glory. Uh, if it was just a regular lane swap where the top laner would still be there on the lane, it would be a kill on the top laner, but there was no one there, completely no one in the bottom half of the map, and OMG will not get the first blood. They'll get a little bit of free farm onto Sun, and that's what they wanted to get because usually that's the strat of OMG. They lose the first turret just to let Sun free farm, but if there's no one on the lane, he can free farm without losing the turret. That's even better. That's true. You don't lose the turret, you only lose anything. But for Young Glory, they'll actually be losing out on almost a lane of experience. I guess you can say the same thing for OMG. They're not going for any sort of crazy steal your XP by sitting in the brush strat. They are just uh, both teams double jungling and double uh, double laning after the swaps. So nothing too notable early on. I'm really excited to see how Cool's Rise does. Rise is kind of coming back in the meta. We've seen him a lot recently in OGN and uh, uh, NALCS. So I'm hoping he's coming back. But nice to see Cool. If there's anybody to show us how to play Rise, it's gonna be cool. All right. So yesterday we have seen a Kyle uh, a Kale versus. Uh... Gragas top lane and it was really passive and nothing was going on for a lot of time so right now we have a Kale versus Dr. Mundo and I think that this is gonna come to play even later than the previous one. They do have the teleports but I don't think that they will get to use them until like 20 minutes in the game. Now it should be about five minutes before we see solo laners actually playing against one another. Uh, you see neither team really prioritizing damage on turrets, although uh, it should go down here in the next couple minutes, uh, two or three minutes there. Actually, <laughs> I think they're proxy farm between the turrets. Yeah, they're gonna go for perfect CS between the turrets. Top lane, very, very aggressive move there. Young Glory, they're kind of switching things back to the 4v0. All four champions top lane, but this time it's not looking to push the turret. It's just the double jungle route taking them up there. Yeah, they don't really have to worry about anything, but now OMG, they're going for the dragon, and that's the disadvantage of them being at the top side of the map. And they'll take it easily. However, Cool may go down in the middle lane. They're setting up a gank. Cool is, uh, I don't think he's going to overextend too well because he's been working this entire game at trying to freeze the wave at his turret. That. Yeah, wow. look at that damage. Wow. Uh, not sure Dian Gun was ready for that. He's trying to bait, but it's not working. Five people right there. If Cool oh. goes a step ahead. And that, that's the LGD strat where you put five people mid lane around five minutes and you're just like, well, he's going to go aggressive at some point or another. I think Cool reads this though and he is playing very yeah. carefully. But at the moment, it's looking like Young Glory uh, are putting up five members in the middle lane, and yeah, we're gonna lose the experience and not do anything, so they have to come back to the top lane, as Caitlyn does. And now it is going to be a Kate versus Kogma, so this lane swap is coming back to the normal kind of uh, laning. Finally going to get to see the lanes match up against each other. It's a little bit ahead of the schedule I expected, but it, it'll, it'll take a lot longer for us to actually see go go and get anyone in his lane and this is actually really good because he gets a lane all to himself and that's something that oh, you're not really going to see out of um out of yinfu anytime soon or yinfu or number one yeah so we'll have to wait a lot until the game uh, expands a little bit more because this mundo will wait to get tanky actually they're going for neymar right here yeah, actually not. You're going to kind of have any way to escape from that. You saw the Piltover Peacemaker out over the wall from Jen Long. You're just like, he's That's trying nice. to get in there, but not a whole lot of help. Yeah, but still, four members right there. I thought that there's two members that caught him, but then there's someone coming in from the back. And the Youngler is really oh, stacking San. up the top lane. San going to get knocked out. There's cleavers to slow. Summoner heals out there. and. Mundo is not tanky yet. He's still sitting on just his Doran shield this entire game. So no dives quite yet for YG. Oh, and Cool is going for the aggressiveness. Just taking half of this Lulu's health. 
But yeah, Cool is definitely just bringing out the damage over and over again. And in the bottom lane, there's kind of a nice push coming up from Gogoing. They might get this turret a lot earlier than Young Glory in the top because OMG is not going to give it away for free. And Mundo was never in the bot lane. And this yes. is a very big deviation from the normal way that you'll see this lane swap strategy pulled off. Because Young Glory didn't push that turret very quickly, uh, OMG were able to get their free farm, get the dragon, and then say, hey, we got the dragon, we've got the early objective advantage, so let's go ahead and swap the lanes back just so we can keep our turrets, and then actually gave Go Going a solo lane. So you can see he's doubling even more than that uh, up versus number one down there. Yeah, the scale, and it's really good for him. Uh, however, Mundo, he just needs to tank up and he doesn't really have many expectations right there, but Kale needs to nuke everyone and then give away the interventions and heals and make everyone stay alive and kill everyone, so this Kale needs much more than a Mundo. And we'll go Gwink will be working hard right there in the bottom lane, but he has the level advantage and that's really good for him. He's going to have level advantage, gold, CS, just about everything. Uh, also, if you look at Dr. Mundo, he was forced to pick up that first item, Negatron Cloak, which means he'll, he's going to be a very long ways away from getting a Giant's Belt, which is really the big lane sustain item for him because of the way it works with his passive. Uh, so with resistances first, that makes Dr. Mundo really, really squishy, and he's not going to get a lot of that regen from his passive off of buying straight HP and is forced away from any big uh, armor items, so he won't be a super tank for turrets. Yeah, but still, it's it's really good for him because you have a Rise, you have a Kale, you have Kog'Maw who has a portion of um, the magical damage, of course, too. So it's just pure AD Lee Sin. So he doesn't really need to stack up this armor too badly, and, well, of course, the sun will get useful a little bit later in the game, so he doesn't really need the early armor. And I don't think that they want to be going for the dives, um, Unless they stack up in the top lane once again, but I don't see him being close to this top. Cool's really got that damage out there. Oh, go going. Getting pushed around that big rock by Dr. Mundo. So he's he's going to give a little bit of ground in the bottom lane, but top lane should be where most of the action's at. His turret will go down. One more auto attack, and there it is. First turret of the game. Going to Young Glory. Yeah, so I actually didn't expect that thing, but well, here comes the, the, the lose the turret and get sun farming strat from OMG. But yeah, I definitely expected this turret in the bot lane to go first in favor of OMG. A good reaction by Young Glory to actually stop double jungling and set um, set number one in the bottom lane just to keep their turret, get him some extra XP. Oh, drug trying to head back to home. He's gonna get stopped by number one. He actually does come back to jungle. He actually wound up accidentally shoving that bottom lane, so he won't be able to go down there for a little bit. Alright, so the farm in the middle lane looks kind of similar, but Kogma is losing out in the top lane, which is a really bad thing for OMG. And I said, we have to look out for Genlong because the laning phase of San is uh, kind of bad. Ghost pop there by Cool is going to get slowed down. There's Ace in the hole. Yanser wants to go in for that, but we got some backup from Cool in the form of Drug. He's going to be two man in that out there. Yanser very low flash over the wall there. Cool's trying to escape, but he's going to get ignited. Last second kill there on Dr. Mundo gets in the dangerous game, keeps him alive. And that is a one for zero in favor of a dive for OMG. The first blood still went over to Young Glory. And Cool is already in the bot lane, still farming. Doesn't even care. Oh, but a dark binding landing there onto um, onto Genlong. Takes him all the way down. And kind of the same thing for Yanser. That dual lane just getting dominated. Very, very strong power push by OMG. They'll be able to rotate for the dragon. And this could be dragon number two. Nobody from Young Glory looking to pressure. Yeah, but look at the damage in the summoner spells. Everyone losing their teleports, flashes, ghosts, everything. Just used right there. And well, the intervention also went down. So there's no, nothing like that available for OMG at the moment. For a little bit of time, it's just still the first level intervention. So the cooldown is quite big. Uh, you can see, uh, number one, he's going to get that bottom lane to himself for a while. And honestly, I was talking about how he's not going to be able to build armor items. That's actually pretty good that he's stacking up AP, or MR. It's a full AP composition from uh, from OMG. And while that may be scary because they'll never be able to kill Dr. Mundo, or maybe Jarvan, depending on how he builds, I just 
don't know who's going to really be doing the damage for Young Glory. I mean, maybe Caitlyn? But Caitlyn and Lulu are more just like persistent damage dealers. You can keep auto-attacking from long range. You can keep those Glitter Lances coming. It's a relatively low but sustained damage comp from Young Glory. So they need to stay alive. Oh, perfect oh. dodge there by Jen Long. Holy cow, that was close. Yeah, it was really close. And uh, the reactions that you showed right there. He had no wards at all. He didn't know that Mor Morgana was coming. And it appeared out of nowhere through the oh, wall. Oh, Drugs going in for this dive here. We've got interventions up if they need it. Dive through, and it's actually Neymar tanking out that turret. He will need an intervention to stay alive unless he stops taking. They're going to trade that back around. It's going to be another kill on the dive. Yancer and number one both going down. Yep, two kills for them right there in a dive. The perfect one, actually, because the support was tanking out. When this Morgana landed the Dark Binding, she was not needed anymore, so he just backed away, and the intervention could be used on another member of the team. That was a perfect play coming out from OMG, getting these two kills and creating the advantage in the gold right now. Big plays off the dive there, and that's the second time in a row that OMG has actually turned things around on Young Glory. Mundo TP to top lane, and they still took him out. Um, they were trying for the dive mid lane, and OMG countered that out. And both times it's been Drug, who's been exactly where he's been needed. Great way to turn this one around, and oh, Sans gonna get slowed out there. Summoner heals, pop, and he dodges the knockup. Just says no there. No Jarvan engaged there from Yin Fu. He will be forced uh, away. Solar... Wait, what? Okay, Solar Flare misses. There's the engage on a cool. Knockups down there as well. And cool just explodes. Drug coming in. He was a little bit slow that time. And wasn't in time to save cool or possibly even this mid turret. It would have been a kill on Leona still. So a one for one. But the flash away at a perfect moment. Just one more turret shot was just flying right there. But still the Wild Grove was also there. Young Glory, well, on the both sides, you have a perfect ability to stay alive on the, underneath the turret. You have the intervention and the wild growth. So, everyone will be going for the crazy dives in this game. Well, Young Glory have been looking for crazy dives. I haven't really found them out just yet. I really love, like, the, uh, the cosplay here by, by Drug and Cool. They both shaved their heads for these games and... Picking ball champions. It's been working out especially well for Drug, but really that's just been his positioning. Cool, though, he's the first casualty, so we're not going to report him for feeding just yet. So he still has the rest of the game to prove himself, and he's uh, a little bit down in CS, but more importantly, he's got his two big core items. That's what makes Ryze so strong, is that he just keeps stacking them up. Oh, Drug coming down to the bottom lane, trying to get in there. On to Shen Long, kicks him into the wall, and there's Cool. Right on time for his uh, second kill of the game. Well, Leona ran in with the boobs, uh, mobile boots and it was like, no, you don't kill my AD carry. But then Cool appears from the backside and it was like, okay, I'm out. So he answered, pretty much not saving his AD carry right there, not doing anything. Still a nice kill for OMG. And will they actually be looking for a stack in the middle lane? They need to push some turrets right now. Because it's just going to be the game of picks uh, this way and... And they're going to lose one and then get one. And it's not really paying off too much. You can maybe see a little bit of a reaction by OMG to not having Cloud down there as their support. Uh, because they've actually kept San solo for most of this. But Neymar is walking in. He just walked into three champions. He throws down the Dark Binding, or the Dark Binding, Soul Shackles, flashes out. Actually makes it out alive. And oh, it actually could be a kill here on a Jarvan. One more swing and it's go going. Taking out Yin Look Fu. Drug. He's still going in, and Cool <laughs> was there damaging the answer. Well, Drug almost pays with his life for this greediness, but still, yet another kill and yet another one. And OMG is just looking so strong right now. They will take the third that I was talking about, but actually, Mundo is coming in. He might have to turn around and run away. No minions for them at the moment. Number one successfully defending the third. That's really nice. But Young Glory, they're falling a little bit behind. 5k gold difference will be there in just a second, so they have to watch out for the gold slipping away. It's only 16 minutes into the game, and this is where we really see OMG make the big push to solidify some goals. So, one of the, a couple of things that they have in their corner are two dragons, so they've 
gotten that every single time it spawned. And they have a very, very strong mid laner, which is a source of sustained damage. So I would have expected to see more tankiness built up just so that they can allow Cool to DPS for longer once the tank line survives. But instead, you're actually seeing full damage, zero defensive stats on Go Going. Other than like the uh, the health from the Toran's rings, I guess. But he picks up a needlessly large rod instead of completing that Nashor's two. So he had the money, bought the AP. Now he's going to be dealing so much damage. Yeah, and he doesn't really care. There's no one actually able to take him down on the lineup of High Young Glory unless he gets caught by five members right there. Because he'll be sitting in the back line because he has the ranged auto attacks. And then he'll just be getting the kills. No problem. Intervention is there too. The full AP build will most probably pay off, but look at that. Young Glory is trying to contest for the dragon. Yinfu is right there, so Drug does not want to get Smite stolen here. Who's going to be the guy that engages? I want to say it's Neymar, uh, who, by the way, in case you guys didn't know, was uh, Koma. So he's coming back in there in the support, subbing in because Cloud is sick. Uh, and it was the same lineup that they used for the IEM qualifiers, which we'll get a chance to talk more about for our second best of two. But both teams tensing things up. You can see Drug really wants to start this up, but he's low health, like below half. So Young Glory is That really pushing makes him away. no sense because he's running into the Dragon Pit when there's five members of the enemy team yeah. around. And he's just losing free health and it makes no sense. Why would he want to pull off the Dragon? I think he's trying to bait Young Glory into the pit so that they overextend and... OMG's trying to get him out there. Insect kick does not work out. And even though Drug's low, he's going to get that intervention. A little bit of a stag there is, oh, it's actually going to be the death for both Yin Fu and Yan Sir. Both of them going down there. Where's the kill on the Lulu? The Q comes out just a little bit overloaded. And that is going to be death on the bottom lane as Shenlong goes down. Drug cleared out some pink wards and he... A little bit of a missed engage, but just what OMG needed. Oh, Drug, though, is actually might be going down here, too. Glitterland slows out, go going. And OMG, very low, but they will take down their third dragon of the game. All right, so first of all, everyone is such low health boss. I have no idea why Young Glory didn't even get a single kill. But then, Drug got caught by a little bit, and uh, go going was trying to go in and it would have been a perfect engage for him once again it would have been even a kill but the glittle and slowing him down of course looking at this needlessly large rod he would have got a kill definitely still the dragon too and nine to two in kills at the moment and young glory i told you about the gold it is slipping away and they will have a hard time coming back into this one because it's just a Mundo in the top lane. He can't really deal too much damage. He'll be a tank. Yeah, and, and you remember how we were talking about Dr. Mundo? How he's going to be unkillable. He's going to be this giant MR stacking tank. And because it's a magic damage team, he's never going to die. Well, A, I don't think that OMG really care if he stays alive or not. Because they've been able to kill him off so many times already. Two deaths. He's down 50 CS. Against Go Going's Kale, who's just going to be able to shred that MR right off of him, even if he does try to tank things up. So he's looking pretty good for OMG right now. 9 to 2 and up almost 8,000 gold. All right, there's uh, Go Going taking down the turret in the top lane. And actually, look at that is just the second turret for OMG. Oh, so and the kick little... back in there. It's going to kick number one right in to Neymar, but can he escape here? Drug does not have a whole lot of damage, and there's oh. a super tankiness coming in again. As number one will survive. Partly it is the super tankiness, but it's the super missed dog biting by <laughs> Neymar right there. It would have been a kill because Gogo Inc. would have caught up and then got the damage off. But still, well, oh my they can't gosh. really seem to take the turrets with the first take. There was the same in the middle lane right now, here in the top. It's leaving the turret at the low health and they can't really finish it off. Well, that was a nice kick by Drug, but I have, have to have some better backup next time. Uh, yeah, since Cool and Drug are cosplaying their bald champions with some nice haircuts, I want to see like the rest of the team. Have trademark champions. Oh, Drug misses the Sonic Wave, but still the Dark Binding gonna land. A lot of damage chunked out there by Cool. Takes Yen Fu down very, very low. Neymar, though, chunking down to half health, so. Koma's gonna be a little bit vulnerable. He doesn't have like his Zanyas or anything, so he's gonna be relying on that uh, intervention to allow him to overextend, get those Soul Shackles off, 
and still make it out alive. Yeah, another Glitterlands crossing there. And once again, Neymar losing a lot of health, so this one kind of has to watch out a little bit more. And I'm definitely sure that uh, Gogoink wants to put this intervention on some other guy than Morgana on his team. Doesn't want to use it on the support. Yeah, it's just the 21st minute in the game and OMG is already developing such a huge lead. But will they try to go for the Baron because they don't really see too much focus around it? Mm. And that is the big question because that can be the big throw too. Exactly. And one of the things that is actually a trademark of OMG is just as the game gets later, while a lot of teams will throw at Baron, while a lot of teams will kind of have a hard time closing out games, OMG just know what they're doing. And as the game gets later, they do uh, have very high success rates. Kick back on Yonser. It's not in time and it kicks him over the wall. The drug with a little bit of a miss there. Needs to get out of there just in time, but it's actually the kill on Yonser, is he? Gets right in there. It's actually a kill oh, on two. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Yin Fu's gonna die, but can they take down Dian Gun? No, he's gonna get it out of there. And there's actually the start binding landing on a Dr. Mundo. No matter how tankiness is gonna keep him safe from three members of OMG. And San there getting in with a kill for himself. Trinity Four is completed and he is so strong. And now, talking about Baron Nasher, OMG. Gonna do it uncontested and deathless. Diangon staying as the only one staying alive in the lineup of Young Glory, and I don't know if you have seen it, but Gogoing flashing in to three members <laughs> of Young Glory doesn't even care, gets two kills on top of that. That is the huge kill. That is the needlessly large road that he picked up, and yeah. now he comes back to the base with a lot of gold. We're getting a chance to see it once again. He's just right in the middle of the fight there. He's like, oh, go going. He's going to get sniped out over the wall by the Zenith Blade. And at this point, he gets ignited, and he's just like, ah, oh, time to Flash. run away. Just kidding. Flashes right into them. Almost takes down Dian Gun, but... He is instrumental. He's got sand there for backup, but just way too much damage. Yonser falls. Number one's going to go down. And the flash in, more importantly, there at the very end by Neymar for the Dark Binding to really seal the deal there on that team fight. And now it's a Baron buff for OMG. So from OMG's side, only two flashes used in this fight and two aggressive flashes that paid off with a kill each. That is really huge. And now they have the Baron. And now, as I said, Gogoin came back to the base with a lot of gold. He gets an... Rabidon's death cap finishes off the Nash's tooth and yet another blasting wand right there. So this is going kind of the way that we expected uh, OMG with a much more dominant sort of roam game. And cool. It's actually been really awesome to watch that mid lane matchup. I was going to say it's been cool to watch that mid lane matchup, but unfortunately I can't use that anymore. Thanks, cool. Big fan. Either way, uh, Dian Gun has been stepping up for... Um, for Young Glory, and Cool has just really hit his stride with OMG. And with both middle laners looking so dominant, that's where I expected to see the strength. But uh, I guess you can actually consider that a strength for Dian Gun, because he's actually been ahead in that CS in the matchup versus Cool, only recently falling down. But it doesn't matter if you win your lane in CS if you give up now four dragons in favor of OMG. Actually, a little fun fact. When we were seeing the players on our screens earlier on we could see a little bit of their hair but right now if you look at the cameras there is <laughs> nothing at all on them they're, they're going pretty hardcore into that um miss dark biting there by neymar still gets slowed out with the late black shield drug trying to come in here i think drug actually might stole the uh <laughs> the blue buff away there from yin fu so <laughs> no blue buff for you drug keeping control of the map yeah, and it will happen a lot more frequently right now that OMG have the Baron, they have the control over the map. They don't really have too many turrets, but this will change definitely. This turret in the top lane, the inner one, is really low on health, so they will just be taking this one really soon. Oh, there's a nice pick immediately on a Yonser, but Drug's the only one there. You can't go in by yourself. Need some backup. He's really just zoning, trying to put some pressure as OMG pushed down that second tier turret in the top lane. Got this dra this uh, Baron buff, looking to put it to use. Yep, drug going for the pick, and well, if it was Yenfu, it would have been a little bit better, but it still was a 1v2. He went for the support, had no backup at all, so he just wasted his Dragon's Rage kick. But well, still, they got the turret for free, 
And now they will be looking for the middle one and then most probably for the bottom one. And OMG will be taking everything away from Young Glory at this stage. Hmm. Uh, one big thing to notice is that with the Infinity Edge build, it's a little bit weaker early on compared to Sans Trinity into uh, Blade of the Ruined King. But I, I, Shen Long actually has a big power spike with the completed Infinity Edge as well as Azeel. So a Kaelin's really going to hurt. Uh, as there aren't really too many armor items <laughs> at all. I'm trying to look for armor, and I think the only buddy with any of those armor stats oh. is cool. Nice dodge out there by Drug. He's going to get slowed out there. Red buffs down, and the slow from that solar flare. going to mean that Drug gets out alive, but it actually might be a little bit of a bait there as OMG gets his catch out on a Yonser. The teleport's coming in from number Damage one. from Kale. It's just insane, and oh, the run away from Dian Gun is going to be able to escape once again, but not quite so lucky there as number one is the number two champion there to die. Of course, Yonser died first there in that fight. OMG just crushing things out. Can't leave their base and all outer turrets about to go down as Go Going, Drug, and Sun will take that one down in the bottom lane. The rest of OMG taking it down in the mid. All right, so there was a perfect play coming out of Drug because he had this uh, Pix on himself and the Glitter Lance is coming out of Pix. But when the Glitter Lance came out, he flashed at the same time, so it didn't connect. That was the perfect play. That, uh, I've seen oh, now the re-engage re at the inhibitor. It's not going to be too good for, uh, for Yin Fu. He gets taken down there. And the and surrender, surrender vote. 27, 28 minutes into the game. It's OMG to take game number one versus Young Glory. And wow, like OMG had so awesome plays in this game and Kogoing being on the top of his team right now with this KO flashing into the whole lineups of Young Glory every single time, dealing the damage all the time. I would love to get the replay of the last fight of the game though because there was this perfect play from Drug and, and there was this perfect damage from Kogoing also going in, but... Yeah, we'll not probably get it. We have to wait for the second game. But yeah, as we said, OMG will be getting into this best of two as the favorites. And they're looking really strong right here. Even ah. though Young Glory was doing a little bit better in the early game with uh, Chen Long being a little bit uh, ahead of Sun and the AD carries. Well, you can see some big signs in the, in the audience for World Elite. Of course, that'll be our second best of two. They face off against Edward Gaming. Edward Gaming actually just finishing off a 2-0 performance versus OMG in the IM qualifiers. And so we actually might see a uh, a uh, little bit of a preview of the grand finals at IM Shangzhen as uh, EDG take on World Elite coming up later on. Of course, we've got Game 2 coming your way for OMG versus Young Glory. We'll see if Young Glory can... Maybe bring it back to a 1-1, but OMG just looking really, really dominant. We'll have game two, number two coming your way here in just a minute. So stick around, enjoy a little bit of an announcement and a little bit of a break before we hop into game number two. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Okay. 